Hello and welcome once again. So it seems that this picture has caused even more of a kerfuffle, not surprisingly, amongst the Flat Earth cult. Um, I've had a few comments, certainly a couple, uh, from people who seem to think that I shouldn't be able to see Ben Lomond in this uh, as it appears here, if the Earth was indeed a sphere. Um, they seem to suggest that I should see it much higher up here. Um, or in one case, somebody seems to think that it should be uh, much lower down uh, and not visible at all. These people don't seem to understand how the curvature calculators uh, actually work. Um, nor do they seem to understand perspective. So what I've done is to prepare a scale diagram. Now I'm going to have to click through the animations on this particular video, so uh, this particular picture, uh, slide. So just to remind you, we have a camera height of 210 meters and the Hopeton Monument height is 210 meters. This means our eye level is also 210 meters. And as you can see, the top of the monument coincides almost exactly with the top of uh, Ben Lomond in the picture. Ben Lomond slightly below the, um, the top of the monument. Uh, this is all uh, due to perspective. Nothing on the flat earth uh, below the red line can be more than 210 meters above sea level. I'll just put in the various hills. So the one we're interested in is Ben Lomond at 974 meters and 124.6 kilometers distance. So uh, what I've done is to prepare a scale drawing from side on view. Uh, I know Nathan Oakley doesn't like side on views, but this is the best way to illustrate the line of sight and how much of the object we ought to be able to see on a flat or a globe Earth. And obviously, um, it's difficult to get this onto a slide in, uh, in scale, um, but we can zoom in a little bit. So I've placed two triangles, one for the hill on which the camera is located, and this is to scale at 210 meters and another one to represent the top of the hill and the monument. So the top of the triangle is the top of the monument. The same below, these are just exactly the same size of objects. So flat earth on top and spherical earth on the bottom. And if we slide across, we see what Ben Lomond should look like. On a flat earth, we should see above our line of sight line about two thirds, a little over two thirds of the uh, mountain, about three quarters actually of the mountain. But on a sphere, our line of sight is just around about the same height as the top of the mountain, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more. And that will depend on the amount of atmospheric refraction occurring at any one time. So you can see that far from the uh, calculators and the predictions, uh, predicting something other than what I have actually seen, uh, they do in fact exactly confirm uh, that what I'm seeing is what we would expect on a spherical Earth with a radius of 6,371 kilometers. I've put in another line here in the scale model. Uh, this is just to illustrate that on a spherical Earth, we should see If we look um, across 
at the top of this hill, looking just slightly down the hill, slightly below the top of the hill. And I hope you can see that this line extends and angles down. It's a straight line starting from the same origin as the, as the other one, uh, hitting just below the top of the Hopeton, uh, the, the Byers Hill, um, so where the monument would be. Um, if we follow that line across, you can see that indeed we should be able to see above the hill a significant portion of Ben Lomond on a spherical earth. Exactly as we do. Looking over the top of Byers Hill, we see a significant portion of Ben Lomond looking on the spherical earth. So the model, the spherical earth model, matches exactly what we predict on a spherical earth and is utterly different to what you'd expect on a flat earth 